We're back, and joining me now is our senior correspondent, Bob Hilburn. He has part two of his report on Elton John. Bob, it seems like Elton's been around as long as the Beatles, as long as the Stones. When did his first album come out? Well, Steve, when you say he's been around forever, it makes me feel like a real rock and roll veteran because that was his, his first show in America. It was one of the first reviews I did for the Los Angeles Times, and his superstar potential was obvious. But th there were still so many surprising career twists you know, over the years with Elton, and I think it's fun to look back at, the, at some of the highlights of that now and get, we might even give us a new perspective on his talent. And I think it's gonna be long, long Elton John blasted off in 1970, and what a rocket ride it was. Five number one singles in three years, four albums in the top ten simultaneously. Not bad for a former piano prodigy named Reginald Dwight. By 17, he had found rock and roll. But it wasn't until he teamed up with songwriter Bernie Taupin and changed his name that he hit it big. In 1976, though, things began to sputter. Elton had too many records out, and the glut was driving sales down. Then came a largely negative reaction when he admitted to Rolling Stone that he was bisexual. Things were so bad, he told the world he was calling it quits. It surprised me a bit, because, you know, America, land of free and all that bit. But um, that's my own naive fault, you know. I mean... I just thought, and in those days, I thought I could say anything without, without hurting people's feelings. I had no uh, qualms about saying it. I don't have any now, but I think it did affect me quite, uh, quite a lot. Well, in 77, when you said you didn't want to perform anymore, what was your feeling at that time? Were you, were you bitter? Were you... Well, in 76, I came off the road, and I, just, I was just, I was tired, you know. I, I knew I'd peaked. You, you know, you have to, every, every, you know something inside you is true, you know. I knew I'd peaked. And I just wanted to have some time off, and I thought that the ego is involved. I thought, well, someone's going to take over from me, someone's going to take over. But I had to stop. I had something else to go to with my football club, thank goodness. If I had have stopped uh, and I didn't have anything else, I would have, might have become a worry. I don't know. A what? I, a worry, we call okay. it. Um, um, someone who's, who you can become better and had nothing else to do. I luckily had something else in my life. Well, if, to do. if you didn't stop, do you think that might have been a tragedy? Oh, if I didn't stop, I, mean, you wouldn't be, I wouldn't be sitting here now. I mean, yeah. I would have burnt myself out. Absolutely. I mean, you think well, unquestionably, there would be no me sitting here in uh, no career like it is today. I mean, you think you'd I, would, be, I would be doing one of those, you know, rehashed 1960s touring things, probably. Mm -hmm. Good God, that's the kiss of death. Ironically, his retirement came on the heels of his biggest hit, not as a solo, but teamed with Kiki D. The next year, he resumed touring with only percussionist Ray Cooper. There were no costumes, no theatrics, just music. They hit 14 countries, including the Soviet Union, and the trip seemed to revitalize him. In 1980, Elton played to 400,000 people in Central Park. He reunited with Bernie Taupin and in 1983 had consecutive singles in the top ten for the first time in eight years. He got married, retired from touring again in 1984, then unretired this year with a very successful U.S. trip. He says making it to the top is harder the second time around, but he's obviously determined to get there. We should fight always in life. There should always be a crossing that you, you think you've made. You will always find another one that you have to cross. Thank God. And I've all, everything I've ever written, ever done, I, is done because I like it. I've made lots of mistakes. I've written songs I don't particularly like anymore. But at the time, I thought I'd, you know, they were the bee's knees. So that's all that you can ask. Oh, no! 